another episode of Strategic Minds Making Money Moves, where we have those strategies to do what? Make that green. I am so excited today to have Miguel Blanco with me, and we're going to talk about his business, what he does, and talk about ways to reach that audience. How do you truly expand your connections to get to that audience? Welcome, Miguel. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. I'd love for you to share with the audience a little bit about your business. Well, uh, my business is Corporate Medicare Solutions. We are a full service uh, Medicare broker agency. And what we do there is we help um, people who are turning 65 or who are already 65 maximize their Medicare benefits. Oh, okay. So what's the difference between you as a broker and just going to Medicare? Tell me a little bit about well, that. Well, as a broker, you have the ability to choose plans for your client. Medicare also has different types of plans and different types of um, benefits that are accessible to the individual when they're eligible. So they need a broker to let them know exactly where they fit. Understood. Okay. So not that we're going to talk about that because uh, I'm sure I got many, many years before we get there. <laughs> okay. Fingers crossed. You won't tell anybody. <laughs> but I'll definitely have to keep this in mind um, mean, as yeah. we continue to talk about Medicare benefits. So share with the audience what um, strategy you'd like to discuss today. Well, I would like to discuss the strategy, uh, the online strategy, uh, understanding that 10,000 people turn 65 every day nationwide. Uh, that's a lot of people who turn 65, and that's a lot of people who don't know exactly what to do with the Medicare benefits or how to access their benefits. So in turn, being that we're so regulated by the federal government, I decided to create a website for people to go and get information. So the strategy I want to discuss today is how do I get these folks to the website? All right. Well, you know, it's interesting. I was reading an article that talked about um, people over 65 or in their 60s to 65 years old, how much do they get online? And can you believe it that over 67% of them are on Facebook? Mm -hmm. They like to go to Facebook. Yeah. They like to use Facebook. And I think what's happening is, is that as they're getting older and they're getting grandchildren and they're getting others and they want to stay connected, they continue to do that. Exactly. And so um, I think that when you begin to think about, hmm, how do I get this message to them? Who do I go to? And how do I make that happen? Let's think about churches, mm. right? So churches have health events, right? They may have a health event. You want to be there. You want to be able to talk to them about Medicare and what's happening. The other thing is, is get to those people that are like 63, 64, mm -hmm. that are going to be turning 65 quickly that in terms of planning, mm -hmm. so they understand what it begins to look like because it's also an education process. Definitely. But you can go to churches and go to their healthcare events. I will tell you there are a number of associations that um, are specializing in healthcare. Mm -hmm. And as we're living longer and lives are expanding, we need to be able to tell more and more um, the individuals that are 64 getting ready to turn 65, you know, we talk about the baby boomers all the yes, time, right. and we talk about where we are, um, to, to, that are actually going to be looking at Medicare um, in terms of moving forward so that we know what that means. Exactly. Now, you can't drive anybody anywhere if you don't have a marketing strategy. Exactly. Right? And so that marketing strategy has to be comprehensive. We've got to think of all angles, not just online, where they are, associations that, that we can go to, going to healthcare events, mm -hmm. senior citizens. When we talk about senior citizens community, now I happen to know from personal experience that in senior citizens community, because my dad lived in one, okay. that they have many programs mm -hmm. where they are begging for people like you. And what they're begging for is they've got communities that are about to turn that age and they want to offer a value add. Mm -hmm. So they're looking for people to come in and say, look, I can do a program for your residents and help them to understand this, that, and the other about what we can do with Medicare, mm -hmm. right? And start to target that audience in terms of the senior communities. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is we talk about um, recreations. You know, the senior recreation centers where they go in to work out and do their things. There's a number of programs, even if you go to the Y. Yeah. There's programs at the <laughs> Y that, you know, are targeted just for senior citizens. Go to these organizations and partner with them. Okay. Talk about a program 
that you can offer. It's not just merely I'm a broker to help you. Exactly. If I can go online to Medicare and get it, then why come to you? Mm -hmm. That's not the issue. The issue is, is I'm customizing everything you need that's best for you and keeping your best interest mm -hmm. in mind. Exactly. Right? In terms of making that happen. So I think, um, you know, those are some of the places that we can go to make that happen. When you are, how long has your website been out? How long have you been in business? Oh, I've been in business since 2018 uh, as a broker, but I've been in the industry since longer than that. Okay. Um, but we launched the website in August of last year. Okay. So it's fairly new. Okay. You know, it's fairly new. Okay. All right. And so do you offer um, any free worksheets on the website that people can go and get a preliminary look of what they may look for? or any inventory or anything like that, that you could give them potential solutions like, you know, come to this website, you can answer these questions mm -hmm. and you might be, you know, you might want to look at part of this, part of that, call us and we can help you determine what that exactly. looks like. Exactly. What, what we do is we, we, we do webinars. Okay. Um, Medicare is very regulated, so there's a lot of things that yeah, we just can't, can't do. do. Mm -hmm. So we try to keep it very broad. So we invite folks to come and listen to the education. Uh, we publish uh, educational articles and scenarios that are educational for the individual so that they can see themselves in that situation and they can make a, a wise decision based on that. Um, and that's what the website is for. Okay, perfect, perfect. Well, that's good because what you're doing is, is you're offering something to them to get something in return, exactly. right, um, in terms of moving forward. And with it being very new um, on your website, um, we do have to begin to think about um, those strategies as we continue to move mm -hmm. forward. Exactly. So we're going to take a station break. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about how do we could dive in a little bit deeper to get a little further. Excellent. We're going to take a station break. We'll be right back. Strategic Minds, Making Money Moves with Vicki Wright Hamilton focuses on helping entrepreneurs to overcome their business challenges to help increase their bottom line. Each episode provides strategies for growth and transformation. Watch Vicki share her 20 plus years of experience as a corporate executive to help entrepreneurs level up. Welcome back. I think this is so interesting as we start talking about brokering. I've always wondered, you know, um, look at a bro when somebody's brokering a, a service or um, providing something to you, how do you best take advantage of it, you know, as you begin to, to move forward? Um, so you said you have um, you have a marketing strategy, a strategist that you're working with, correct? Yes, yes. And have you built out that strategy for getting people to the website? What has been some of the thoughts of things that you've tried? Yeah, well, the strategy is, is two-pronged. Um, we have an engagement strategy, and through the engagement, we direct people to the website mm -hmm. um, and that engagement strategy is to physicians, to mm -hmm. providers. Uh, so we, we're, more, we're a provider marketer. Um, uh, we try to, pro to market through the providers as opposed to marketing to the individual uh -huh. because of the regulations. the regulations. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Okay. So that means that when you're beginning to look at groups that you can partner mm -hmm. with, you're really looking at the um, physicians associations. Yes. You're really looking at the healthcare associations. Mm -hmm. You're looking at um, um, organizations that you can funnel your information through exactly. to get to the individual. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Because okay. what happens is a lot of people don't have that information, but they still have a position. Mm -hmm. So when they come with roadblocks, they talk to the receptionist. I can't afford my medicines. Um, my, my, my actual insurance is not covering X, Y, and Z. So that receptionist is the one that knows that I can provide the service. So she picks up the phone and calls me. So we market to the provider. Okay. Okay. All right. And have you been able to spread that, those providers out to within your network or is it a very concentrated area? No, it's throughout the network. It's, it's a, it's a referral based business. So somebody in my network was like, Hey, Physician X may need your services. Mm -hmm. Because what we do also is that we help the physicians align themselves with the proper carriers that are suited for what they are doing. Because not everybody is suited for everybody. So it's more of a consultative approach as well. Okay. So do you speak at any healthcare associations of physicians or nurses or 
doctors or psychologists mm -hmm. or you know, I yeah. mean, I think when I think healthcare, I think broad. broad exactly. You know, we have a lot of mental um, health mm -hmm. issues and things that are going on. We have drug rehab mm -hmm. of things that are going on where people are trying to figure out, you know, what their benefits are and how they can get aid and help and and what work, what's um, valuable and what's not. So do you speak it at all at any? Um, when given the opportunity, we definitely take advantage of it. Aha. Uh -huh. So are we looking for opportunities yes, to speak? Yes, ma'am. Yes, we are. All, All right. right. All right. Well, there is a, um, a website out there called Speakers Hub. Mm -hmm. Okay. Speakers Hub is one that you can go out and join that will help you to be able to um, get, uh, put your, your criteria out there, what you're looking for, the audience you're looking for, in order to be able to understand um, what's there. Okay. Um, one of the, you know, because then you can target, you know, um, what you're doing. And then there's, um, so there's many, you could always go to speakers bureaus. Those are a little bit more expensive okay. in terms of doing, but you can do that. The other thing is when I was talking about associations, most of them have conferences, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, and you might have to start small mm -hmm. and it might be that you're providing a workshop at a conference. Mm -hmm. And then you go from a workshop to a keynote, you know, and you continue to grow and totally. develop as you're moving totally. forward there. Um, so that you can begin to get those speaking engagements and, and make it happen. Um, and through those professionals, okay. through those professional organizations. Um, uh, I was curious that from a brokering perspective, um, with all the regulations, do you have an opportunity to go to corporations that you can actually let them be aware through the, the healthcare provider. Mm -hmm. So talk to an organization, this healthcare provider does so and so, and we can help to do that. Or is it more the healthcare has to recommend you? No, um, the name of my company is Corporate Medicare Solutions. Understanding that those 10,000 people when they turn 65, they are at work. In this country, in order to have healthcare, you have to be employed. So the transition from Medicare, I'm sorry, from group to Medicare happens in the workplace. So that's my target. Speak to companies who have more than 50 employees, as those employees age in, allow us to educate your employees so they can still continue to work for you. You don't have to um, downsize because healthcare is too expensive for your key employees. Oh, that's even, you know, when you think about that target, I even think about ideas of going to certain industries. Mm -hmm. If you think about manufacturing, and it's a very, you know, it's an older um, demographic you know, mm -hmm. of a lot of people that are in manufacturing that stay that, you know, have been there 20 years, 30 years, 40 exactly. years, et cetera, um, that have been there a long time. I think about other industries that um, we're working in and they're looking for older employees mm -hmm. with all that industry knowledge and wisdom to help exactly. to make it happen. Now, if there's anybody over those, over that size of a company that you're looking for um, in moving forward, um, the, the, the opportunities are endless, yes. right? And so I would love to understand your, do you have a sales model that you're using at all in terms of being able to get to these companies mm -hmm. or going to any events where the HR professionals are that do HR benefits, et cetera? Do you, do you have any of yeah, that yet? Yeah, right now the strategy, we're doing it all on LinkedIn, through the groups on LinkedIn, um, using a lot of social media in order to just to get them to become aware of the service. Um, a lot of HR professionals who, when their employees become Medicare eligible, they just give them the 800 number. It's not an actual a process that they have in place. So we're trying to um, help them identify the process, if not provide them with that process, in order for them to always transition their employees into from group to Medicare seamlessly. Okay. Um, you know, there's organizations like SHRM, the mm -hmm. Society of Human Resource Management and things like that. I don't know if you have investigated any of those and looking at when they have their specific conferences around benefits, right? Strictly dealing with HR benefits, exactly. right? In terms of going and That's going to their idea. conferences <laughs> and dealing with and dealing with benefits because those are the ones that are gonna help make the decision. Exactly. Right. And they're the ones that really need to be involved in, in making that happen. Um, and even when you do your webinars, targeting your, your audience to your webinars to those HR professionals and benefits so that they can therefore come and say, oh, I have an opportunity that I can help you exactly. here or I can help you there, that kind of thing in terms of moving forward. Um, and then you can begin to um, look at those companies because there are so many 
I mean, when you think about all of the different industries and companies, I mean, I think about, oh my gosh, everybody has aging employees, yes. right? Yes. In yes. terms of moving forward and what they need. Uh, We're gonna take a station break. And when we come back, I'll give a few, have a few more items to share. And then we'll see if we have a question from the audience. We'll be right back. Strategic Minds, Making Money Moves, with Vicki Wright Hamilton, focuses on helping entrepreneurs to overcome their business challenges to help increase their bottom line. Each episode provides strategies for growth and transformation. Watch Vicki share her 20 plus years of experience as a corporate executive to help entrepreneurs level up. Welcome back. As we were talking about, this is really an interesting subject as we talk about having um, a Medicare broker and really understanding the rules and the regulations, you know, that are around it and who you can sell to and who you can't and how you move it forward, et cetera, you know, in terms of making it happen. Um, I had another idea as I was thinking about um, your effort, especially when you start talking about getting into business. A lot of businesses either have a intranet site or a newsletter, et cetera. Mm -hmm. It would be great to have articles and things that are on that to help people, to, to help the, the organization as well. Mm -hmm. So if a HR benefits person says, you know what, we really would like to use it so it can be seamlessly, mm -hmm. can you provide us information to help us to make it seamlessly? Mm -hmm. And then being able to um, provide those kind of articles and information even on their systems so it's coming through the company, but it's getting educated to the individual, exactly, right? Exactly. So that they can continue to keep that knowledge exactly. and understand and, and move forward. Um, it's really, um, I also think about uh, globally, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you have to learn, uh, are you global or are you, is this, is Medicare strictly US? A lot of people have questions about that. Yeah, um, you have your, your expats. I think that's what they call people who move mm -hmm. to other countries, but they're still U.S. citizens, mm -hmm. that's a big population. And that's why the website is so critical um, because a lot of people move to other places and if there's a website, you know, I'll give you an example, people who move to Latin America, um, healthcare is cheaper there, but when they get a little bit older, they have to come back because they want detailed healthcare. And they find out that they didn't apply for Medicare adequately, they're doing it too late, they have penalties. So it's important to reach out to the, to, to the people who live outside of the United States but are citizens as well. So it's a great, big move for us. So do, are there company, are there um, organizations that you go through to be able to get that message out? How do you reach those constituents? I go to the consulates. Okay. I go to the consulate. And I'm, right now I'm really focused on the uh, Latin America um, segment, being that I'm bilingual and that's my one of my core um, competencies. Um, so I go to the different consulates for the different countries and offer them the service and let them know to let folks know that they can have their Medicare services um, mm -hmm. taken care of. Well, you know, it's interesting. Don't stop your reach um, in terms of marketing efforts. Mm -hmm. You know, um, here it really opens up um, a, a different demographic and area for you totally. as people are leaving and, and then want to come back, you know, to get that Medicare. That's very, very interesting um, that that kind of opportunity even exists. Yes right, yeah. in terms of making it happen um, and reaching those constituents as you move forward. Um, you know, the other thing, what about travel um, companies? You know, companies where, because a lot of senior citizens like to travel. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, look, I paid my dues, I work, I've done what I had to do, I want to travel, I want to go yeah, have some yeah. good time, right? <laughs> I want to do the last part of my life just seeing the world and doing things like that. And as they begin to, to move in that direction, those companies, of travel agencies and things like that, that you can partner with that have those kinds of special um, travel programs. Mm -hmm. I know there's a number of them that specialize in helping senior citizens to go see what they want to see exactly. or travel where they want to go. Mm -hmm. That's another avenue, you know, totally. potentially totally. that you could that you could target. Those folks we want we're this is different facets to 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 our strategy. Um, the website itself, the audience of the website is the audience of those travel companies. So when we start getting the, the traffic that we want, we'll target those companies, but for advertising purposes. So they can promote themselves among right. our audience as well. Okay. Yeah. So okay. that's a whole nother. And see, that's the other thing. That's true. Sponsorships, advertising, all of that is yeah. there too, but you got to get them to the site, exactly. right? Yeah. <laughs> so in order to get them to the site, you got to have something attractive to them 
that's going to make them want to go to the site, exactly. right? It's a great strategy to have, you know, once they know you and get advertising. Mm -hmm. And you can get advertising from them, you know, for your website. Exactly. I mean, let's talk, you know, yeah. in terms of, you know, well, you know, we, we offer this and, and looking for ads, just like you can companies. Exactly. Companies that have a major aging population and things like that, you can also do that to get sponsors. Exactly. But we got to first make them aware. And that's the key. Right. And and I think that through all of your social media that you're doing to make them aware, um, speaking engagements mm -hmm. that you can do um, and looking at those areas, you know, a speaker hub and others, um, whether it's a um, a speaking agency or something else can also help you okay. in terms of moving forward. Excellent. All right. Let's see if we have a question or a comment from the audience. Hi, my name is Trace Gador. I'm with The One in Me. And a question I have, being that I'm Hispanic personally, um, you mentioned you also have other clients, Latin America. Do you personally speak um, a different language or do you have agents as well? Also, do you have a checklist uh, for those agents, I mean, for those um, customers in multi-language as well to know what they will need to see if they qualify for your services? Definitely. Um my agency is a bilingual agency. 80% of my agents are fluent in English and in Spanish. So we have the ability to help folks in Spanish. Then we have other agents that are, are Korean, so they are able to help in, with that particular language or any dialects in, that are native to Korea. So yes, to answer the question, we do help folks. Okay, and you print in those languages too? Not the website. The, these are the, the agents themselves are multilingual, so they are mm -hmm. able to help. The carriers print their information in language, okay. Because since we're broken, we make sure that that, that if let's say for lack of the anthem mm -hmm. comes through, that we make sure that anthem has literature in Korean, literature in Spanish, literature in Vietnamese okay. for our, our clients. Yes. Okay, awesome. So when you're trying, when you have international clients that you are bringing to the website, um, it's really the the brokers that are that are coming in, and they make sure that the languages are applicable exactly. to the client, exactly. to the client, yes. their services. Yes. That's very, very interesting. I'll tell you, you know, this is a truly um, uh, an interesting opportunity when you begin to think about all the different elements. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is, as you're putting your strategy together, as I walk through each process and you want to target companies, looking at those companies that have, you know, um, more employees that have, and have a large aging population, working through them and their HR benefits um, areas um, and getting that acknowledgement, your speaking engagements, being able to do that. And even when you work through HR um, and understanding what's there, as you mentioned, you know, we never want to leave the opportunity to get an advertiser, mm -hmm. someone who's going to sponsor you. Sure. And you may even do it as a sponsorship of a webinar. Mm -hmm. So you might say, I'm going to do this webinar and is, it is sponsored by X company, exactly. you know, as we continue to move forward um, in terms of doing that, because it'll also help you, you know, with, with ad revenue and not to mention the exposure. Exactly. Um, in turn, and then, you know, your agents getting speak engagements, having your agents speak in their local, in their, in their local areas mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. becomes an opportunity. And it's not just on you, but they're able to speak to help, you know, to make things happen as well. You know, and it takes you to that next level. Yeah. Um, and then um, I love your approach as you're talking about, you know, the two prong approach to the website and what you're trying to do. I would just encourage you to leverage as much as you can um, in terms of all of those entities that have senior citizens. Yes. Right. And that we are targeting them in terms of moving forward. Um, and I know that, you know, if you can't go to the individual itself themselves and you have to go through an entity to actually get there, you know, working through um, those physicians, doctors, um, dentists, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, psychologists, chiropractors, yeah. chiropractors, all the rest yeah. of them, all of them <laughs> in that medical field, Definitely. you know, that that are trying to um, that are trying to help to move yes. forward rehab facilities mm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so um, I I am I'm excited to hear more okay. about where the Definitely. organization is going and where things are happening can you join me in thanking my guest today Miguel <laughs> Thank you so much for joining this episode of Strategic Minds Making Money Moves, where we tell those strategies and make that green. Look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Goodbye.